Hi, Thinker Teacher here. In this tutorial, I will teach you how to 3D model and 3D print this cube right here, your very own fidget cube. I broke it. Again, Ah. Oh. If you're an absolute beginner, or you only know a little, this is the perfect tutorial for you. I will teach you how to get Fusion 360 for free, the basics of the user interface. I will walk you through the essentials of 3D modeling and 3D design. I'll teach you the most important tools that you need to be aware of when you're creating your own 3D models. I'll teach you shortcuts and hotkeys to speed up your process. I'll teach you the best settings for 3D printing. And I'll also teach you how to customize your own fidget cube. We created this tutorial to be the simplest and best possible explanation to use Fusion 360. I would know because I literally looked at tens of tutorials. Anywho, I promise you by the time you finish this tutorial, you'll not only be able to make your own cube, but you'll understand enough about 3D modeling where you can start making your own creations. So let's do this. Let's start modeling. All right, first step in our process, let's get Fusion 360 for free. Pay close attention to this part because if you type in the wrong search term, you're gonna end up with the wrong edition. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna type in Fusion 360 for personal use. And you don't want this edition. See how this is an ad? Uh-uh, not Fusion 360 free education download. You want this one right here, Fusion 360 for personal use, Autodesk. And that's gonna take you to this website right here. So you wanna end up on this site. If you click anything else, it's gonna redirect you to this. It's gonna force you to get the business or education version. Here's the problem with those versions. They last for 30 days, and then after the 30-day trial has expired, the program completely bricks, it becomes worthless. If you have an education version, it will last beyond that if you have a valid ed educational email. It'll, it'll last as long as that email is valid. But even in those cases, I notice a lot of people have difficulty with it, so I don't recommend it. So again, you go here, wait until, again, Fusion 360 for personal use. You can use this link here as you see it. Um, and then, nope, don't, no thanks. And then you're gonna click Get Started. Uh, you're gonna click Create Account and then fill out a bunch of stuff, you know, give it your email, give it a good password, blah, 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 and then create a count. And then eventually it's gonna redirect you to download a downloader. So you're gonna download this thing that is only a downloader for the actual program. Uh, you're gonna execute those, and now congratulations, you have Fusion 360 for free. All right, first things first, let's learn the interface of Fusion 360. What I recommend you do is go out, uh, leave this video on and leave it on repeat <laughs> and buy a mouse with a scroll wheel. This is so much better than using a trackpad. I have kids who try to use trackpads. Oh my God, don't do that. <laughs> use a mouse. Okay, now how to move in Fusion 360. So using your mouse, if you scroll wheel up, you zoom in, scroll wheel back, zoom out, um, mindset to that. Uh, I don't like the default on Fusion, uh, but you can flip that. You can look that up if you want to flip it. So scrolling in and out with your mouse wheel. Now to pan, center click your mouse wheel and drag. To rotate, press and hold shift and center click your mouse. And now you rotate. Now some important points about rotating. If you have an object up, something like this, like my Nerf turret, um, depending on where your mouse cursor is last. So I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to press and hold shift and click here. Look where I'm rotating about. So I'm rotating about the last place my cursor was at. So same thing here. I'll zoom in here, press and hold shift, center click, and I rotate about there. Super important you get used to this. And then sometimes it'll just snap to the center of the object too, if you don't click on the object. Another way you can rotate is by coming over here to your top right 
and then using what's called the view cube. And I can snap to a particular view. So I'm going to pan, keep this on the left view, and then I'll click this arrow here, which is going to rotate me through to the top. Now I'm snapped to a particular view. And you can click these arrows here to rotate through that view. Pretty cool. Okay, a bit about the menus. This top menu here, which I'll just call a menu. I'm going to call everything a menu because words are hard. Um, you want to stay either in the solid menu. Uh, you don't need to be in the surface, the mesh, sheet metal, blah, 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 for any part of this video. So if you ever see these weird looking icons, you probably accidentally click this. Um, unless you're sketching. So watch, I'm going to click create sketch, look at the icons, and I'll click, uh, I'll sketch on top of this. Look what happened to my icons. They changed because now I'm sketching, not creating a solid. I'll finish sketch there, control Z, because I don't want to lose track of this. There we go. Now, this here is called our browser. Um, this is where you keep track of all your separate components. So for instance, here's the magazine, right? I'm going to turn that off. So now I've turned the view of that component off by clicking the eyeball. I'll turn it back on. I'll go through this in more detail. Um, there's right, um, a right submenu. You can open this up and turn on and off individual bodies. So I have two parts to my magazine, you'll notice, and I can turn those on and off. We'll get to that too. Last thing, down here, this is called your timeline. And your timeline keeps track of every single step that it took to build your print. Let's start by giving our file a name. So you're gonna come up here to the top left corner. You're gonna click File, scroll down and then click Save. And let's give it a name. I'm gonna call it Infinity Cube. Another common name is Fidget Cube. Uh, if you wanna take it to the next level, you could say to infinity and beyond cube. <sighs> Buzz Lightyear for life. Okay, now you wanna put this in a particular location. Now you might be tempted to create a folder for that. Uh-uh. Instead, click new project. And I'm going to give this the title education. And I'd like you to, to do the same because my hope is my video is the first of many videos, or maybe I'm the second or the third of many videos you're viewing in your process of learning education. Hit enter to accept that. And now I'm going to select education. So I have infinity cube located in the area project location. We'll click save. And note this, it says document is not editable, make editable, and then that went away. Fusion only allows you to work on 10 documents at once. That means um, only 10 of them are editable. So you can have as many documents as you like, it's just that you're only allowed to work on 10 of them at a time. So if you have 100 documents, you basically make 90 uneditable and 10 editable. But if you want to work on any of those other 90, you just turn off the editability on any of your existing 10 and then turn on the editability of any of the other ones. Does that make sense? I hope it does. All right, let's move on to components. What do I mean by components? Well, your fidget cube consists of two parts, the block itself and the hinge that interconnects the blocks. So block versus hinge. I broke it. I broke it. I'll show a picture. All right, anywho, let's go over here to Infinity Cube. Oh, oh well. <laughs> so look, there's two separate parts to this, two separate components, the hinge versus the block. Now look at my timeline. I have this overall timeline for every single step I took to build the whole thing. But I'm going to scroll down here to hinge and click within the little circle that popped up to the right. And then now we can see that the hinge is solid and the block is transparent. Look at the timeline. You see how it's only about half the steps? This is because every step I took relevant to the hinge component was done in this timeline. And likewise, let's come over back here to the block and I'm going to scroll over the name and a little circle appears. I click within that. And then now every step relevant to the block shows up in a separate timeline. So you could tell that once you have a very large timeline with, you know, maybe hundreds of steps, it just makes sense to have things separated. 
that and it just makes this easier to look at and work with. Like, oh, let me just look at my hinge. Let me just look at my block. I think you all get the point. So let's create separate components. Real simple. Come over here to the name of your document, Infinity Cube in your browser tab, right click and then select and left click new component. And you come over here to the right menu and you're gonna give it a name. I'll call it block for the block component. And then I'll come back over here and then I'm gonna hit new component and I'm gonna dial in hinge and then click okay. Now, before you begin, make sure mouse over your block, click within the little circle, activate the block component because that's where we're gonna start our build. Let's begin our build by snapping to a top view. So I'm going to come over here to the right to my view cube, click the word top. It's going to snap me to a top view. And now let's create a sketch. So I'm going to come over here, top left. I'm going to click create sketch. And now every time you create a sketch, it's going to ask you what plane do you want to sketch on? So I'm going to rotate my view. You don't have to do the same, I'm just showing you. There's three planes we could sketch on right now but we still want to sketch on the top plane. So I'm going to snap back to a top plane. And when I mouse over this, it's going to change colors. And then now look, our top menu bar has changed. And we have this new right menu here. So now we're prepared to create a sketch. First thing we're going to do is draw a rectangle. So you could come over here to create, and this is where you can create all different sorts of shapes and lines, etc. But um, we're going to make a rectangle, as I said. So I could mouse over to rectangle and mouse down to two point rectangle, but there's a better way. It's located here in your quick access toolbar, but there's an even better way. And this is going to be a theme. Use a hotkey, hotkey letter R. And I'm going to click the center right there. And then I'm going to drag it out. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see the 25s. Now, you could drag it until you get 20, and that's fine. That's not too hard to do, but here's a better way. Look at the blue highlighted field right now. That's the active field. So I could type in 20 right away. And look what happens. The 20 showed up and a little lock sign appeared next to it. Um, that means that that measurement is locked in place. So I can move my mouse around now. The 20 stays put but the other measurement changes and I could change like which um, quadrant I'm in. Ooh, I remembered my math, yay. All right, so now in order to enter a value into the other value entering place, um, you hit tab and now I'm gonna dial in 20. And now I get a double lock and I'm gonna hit enter to accept that. So now I've made a 20 by 20 rectangle also known as a square. It's true. Now, um, I can click finish sketch and I'm done sketching and look what happened. Your top menu changed because we're out of the sketch panel. I'm going to extrude this square into the third dimension. So how do we do that? So I'm going to click this and I'm going to come over here to the top left to the create drop down, And I would scroll down and look for the extrude option or you could find it here in the quick access menu. But of course, the way I'll recommend to do it is click it and then dial in letter E for extrude. And then now we have a blue highlighted field. It's asking you for how much distance do you want to extrude it? And that number, so I'm gonna enter in 20 here. That number, which I entered in here is entered over here into this right menu, the distance of extrusion. And then you're just gonna either hit enter or click okay. And now we've made a cube and you could 3D print this cube right now if you wanted. But let's make it a little bit more interesting, eh? Okay, so now let's give it some rounded edges. That's called filleting, not filleting, filleting. And I've never heard that word before 3D modeling either. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right, but I'm pretty sure that's right. So we're gonna round out the edges. So it's up here in your modification tab. Here it is and here it is. But of course, I'm going to say hit key letter F. Now we're going to select all the edges to a cube. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and a total of 12 edges. 
Now let's say, as I'm clicking through the edges, I inadvertently click a face when I did not mean to. Look at your right menu over here. See what it says? I have one face and nine edges. So it keeps track of what it is I've clicked and unclicked. So I'm going to unclick that, and then now I only have edges selected. So let's get the other couple edges here. And there you are. Now we've selected 12 edges, that's all of them. Make sure your corner type is set to rolling ball. And in this entry menu here, I'm going to enter in the number 3. That's a radius of curvature of 3 for all of them. And hit Enter. And there you go. Now you've made a rounded cube, which I think looks pretty cool. All right, the next thing we want to do is create the inset into the cube that the hinge goes in, which I can thankfully show you due to my freshly broken cube. And let me show you what the 3D model looks like. It's this cut in that the hinge is going to sit into. So here's how we do this. First thing, Fusion does not like sketching on a rounded surface. So we need to flatten this fillet we just did. And we're going to bring it back. So come down to your timeline. You're going to right click the fillet. You're going to scroll up and then click suppress features. So we've turned that off and we'll turn it back on shortly. All right. Come over here to your orientation cube and then click it so that it snapped to a top view. But I'm going to rotate so that it's spelling top left to right as one would expect to spell the word top. <laughs> All right. Now. We're going to sketch on this surface specifically. So I'm going to click Create Sketch. I'm going to click the top surface. And now I'm in the Sketch uh, menu. And first thing I'm going to do is create a construction line. A construction line is a line that you draw that doesn't create extrudable geometry. So the way you activate that is by coming over here to the right menu and clicking Construction. But the better way to do it is hit key letter X. And now it turns blue, that means construction is active. Now we're going to draw a line. So again, you can come over here to create and select line, or it's up here in the quick menu, but I'm going to hit L for line. I'm going to click the origin and drag up, and then I'm going to dial in. Of course, it's already set to 5, but I'm going to dial in number 5, and then hit Enter. Now I've made a line of length 5. Now I'm going to inactivate construction by hitting letter X and see how it un unblued. Well, there you go. Now we're going to make a rectangle. So R for rectangle. I'm going to click the dot I just created and I'm going to dial in 7. Tab 10 and then hit enter. Now I'm going to extrude this to cut into the cube. So I'm going to click the surface and I don't even actually have to finish sketch first. I can click the surface and dial in E immediately. And if I gave it a positive 7, it would extrude upward. We don't want that. We're going to put a negative in front of that 7, which is going to extrude downward. And that's going to be set to operation cut by default. Of course, if it was set to join, it would do absolutely nothing. So under operation, we want it set to cut. Then we're going to click OK. Now, we're going to go to the fillet we did earlier. We're going to right click that and we're going to unsuppress that. And there you are. You've made your cube with its inset. Now you might be wondering, why didn't I just do the fillet later on? Well, if I did the fillet later on, after I created this cut in, this corner would be rounded too. I don't want that. I just want it to stay. Um, I want the roundedness to be on the outer edges. And that does it for today's video. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Two more parts.